Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me at the table. I am glad you are back for part two of Make It Automatic. I got to tell you, it's been a crazy night. I first recorded 10 minutes. My microphone was not turned on. Realized that, turned around and recorded a half hour session and never started recording. So I got nothing. It was just me talking to a camera <laughs> with no video capture or audio capture at all. So we're going to try this again. And who knows, maybe it'll turn out to be the best ever. But anyway, thank you for coming back for part two of Make It Automatic. Um, last week, we talked about, you know, making your life automatic. There's things that we do that just we do without even realizing it, like driving to a location. It just it becomes automatic. And let me check. Yep, I still have a pulse one week later, and I did nothing to make that happen. It's just automatic. So I want to continue about, you know, how we can change our lives by making things automatic and the way we worship God, make it automatic, the way we pray, make it automatic, the way we read scripture, make it automatic. Everything, make it automatic. But we can't unless we get one foundation down. And that is that we have to live loved. We have to live knowing that God loves us. Now, I talked to a person this morning. I'm on this Facebook group uh, with people from around the world. And this particular person, she was from, she's from South Africa. And I knew she was discouraged about something that had happened on in the group um, the night before. And uh, I just was looking at messages, and God spoke to me and said, tell her, that she is loved by God very much. So I said, hey, did you know you're loved by God very much? She comes back with, why would you say that? And then I didn't get a chance to answer. She says, you know, I'm so glad you said that because I tell people all the time. I lead them to Christ. I teach them about the Bible. I tell people how loved they are. I encourage them in so many ways. Yet I struggle with the fact that God loves me. So thank you for that reminder. It stopped me in my tracks. God is good. I want to tell you something. God loves you. Yeah. You, who's watching this on Facebook Live right now. You, who's watching this on YouTube. You, who just happened to stumble across this and, and this is the thing that's on right now and you're listening. God loves you. God loves you. Now, you know, you're going to be, some people are going to say, yeah, God just, he can't love me. I'm just not lovable. I mean, I've done too many things. Let me tell you a personal story. I struggle with it too. I don't struggle with it anymore, praise God. But I believed I was in my 40s and missed opportunities and mistakes that I made in my life and just things that went wrong and weren't really the way that I thought they should be. And, and I just said, you know, it must be that God just, he's got other people that are better at, at this. He's, he must not love me as much as he loves, take your pick, name, name someone who's, who's well known for their ministry. That's what I would compare myself to. And I know you've probably compared yourself to other people. You see people smiling. They got a great family. Everything looks great. And you say, oh, God must really love them, but he doesn't love my family like that because we don't have money. We don't have fancy cars. We don't have a nice house. What? Um, where in the Bible does it say that God loves you if you have this, this, or if you do this or that? I'm sorry, but God loves you unconditionally you are loved you are loved now i'm not going to sing the song but I, it's going through my head now you are loved and until you realize that oh my goodness there are people who are still sitting there i know that you are sitting there saying no no not me phil no stop that please you are loved yes Okay, let's go through the reasons why you feel like you're not loved. Continuing to sin. I'm not going to list them all. You know what they are. 
you just can't stop sinning you, you try so hard and you just you keep on sinning and you can't get past it does that make you not loved or perhaps it's well I've really done a lot of bad things. I don't do that anymore, but I've done a lot of bad things in my life. You just don't know, Phil. I mean, I have really did a lot of bad things. Okay. Unconditional. Doesn't matter. Or you might say, well, I'm clearly not loved. Look at my condition. I, I don't have a good job. I barely have any clothes to wear. I don't. I, I, maybe you're homeless. Does that mean God doesn't love you? God is forsaking you? No. No. I will pull out the Bible and I will show you countless places where God shows incredible love to people like that. Yeah, I will. We need to realize that we are loved so that we can do what God has called us to do so we can act in the gifts that he has given us, so that we can move with his spirit. But we have to realize that we are loved. And we have to realize one more thing. And to illustrate this, I'm going to tell you this. What would you say if I were to tell you that this is the last episode of At the Table that you'll see? I'm done. After tonight, I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. How would you react? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. That's not the truth. But for some of you, it's like, yes, that guy's finally going to be off the air. <laughs> some of you were probably saying, what? what? You can't do this filming. We enjoy this. Oh, man, what are we going to do on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock now? But what I want you to realize is it's not about this show. It's not about this red tablecloth or this fancy mug or the camera and the microphone and the computer and this... Well, this tree is pretty awesome. But it's not about this tree. It's not about these seats, this bookshelf. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Everything. We are here. Not so that we can build up ourselves and we can make people see how great we can put things on Facebook. or It's not so that I can build up and become well-known and popular I'm not making up for the fact that I wasn't popular in school. No, it's nothing like that. No. This is about Jesus. It's not about all of you watching. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. And it's about being loved. When we get those two things in, we can move forward and we can make a difference in this world and i'm going to be completely honest with you right now i'm disappointed okay i'm really disappointed because i sat here for a half an hour thought i was recording and and i walked away from it and when i hit stop recording here it, it turns out it, it started recording but i i said but God, that was probably the best one I've ever done. And you know what? God spoke to me. It's not about you. It's about me. And he's right. It's about him. So, why is it important for you to realize you are loved? God loves you unconditionally. Whoa, that's a big word for a human being. We put conditions on everything, don't we? Okay, don't put gas in your car. Car doesn't go anywhere. There's a condition. In order to have a car, you got to put gas in it. You got to pay the oil companies. You got to pay them, and they're providing a service for you so you can go places you want to go. Condition. Do you think I go to work just because I love my job? I do like my job a lot. I really do. But there are days I would rather just stay home and watch television or clean up around the house or, you know, maybe walk outside. But I put a condition on going to work. 
And that condition is they pay me every two weeks. They say, we will pay you every two weeks if you'll come and spend 40 hours a week with us. Oh yeah, I'm doing it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the television or the house. So we put conditions on everything in our lives. We don't eat, we get hungry. There's a condition. You don't hit start recording, you don't record. That's the condition. <laughs> but God loves us unconditionally. But Phil, you see, I've done these things, man, and my history is just so tainted and 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 you know, and I got this really bad life and I'm not healthy and Okay. God still loves you. Yeah, but you see, I I, I keep on sinning and, and I know I shouldn't, but you know, when when we do that, we kind of let's say this is our life and we keep sinning and we build up this like resistance and we almost feel like God can't penetrate that. No. Do you not know where God is? If this is your life, where's God? Inside, the Holy Spirit dwells within you when you become a Christian. He comes into your life. Your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. But what about this garbage that we build up, this resistance? It's called a stronghold. And Paul, the Apostle Paul talked about strongholds. And we can pull them down. Why do we sin? We hate sin, right? Why do we sin? Because it makes us feel good. Because we like the way people look at us. Because we like the stature that we get from the things that we do. Because we move up when we stab somebody else in the back. Because I don't have to feel bad about myself when I talk about that person. Did you hear what they did? makes you feel better it makes you feel better if we if it didn't make us feel better we wouldn't sin if eating didn't make us feel better none of us would be fat <laughs> and i'm the first one to admit i am okay it makes us feel better and believe me there are many things that make us not feel good and then when they, we don't feel good, we don't feel loved. And when we don't feel loved, we don't want to do anything for God. But I pushed through and I said, God loves me and I got to gotta break this stuff off. For a while, you break it off and next thing you know, you got more than what you had. The problem is you're looking out at the sin, thinking, if I don't get rid of this, God's not going to love me. Look inside. Look inside where the Holy Spirit is within you. Jesus died for you before you were born. You know what that means? That these sins that you think are holding you back and keeping God from loving you, they were forgiven before you were born. They have no control over you at all forgiven before you were born you know what that means god knew he knew are you a christian yes then he knew you know what he knew he knew that these sins were going to happen all piling up making you feel bad but you know what god saw the other side maybe it'll be a day a week, a month, or even a year. But God, sorry, God will help you get, he sees beyond the sins, he sees no sin. Okay? Yes, he forgave your sins, but I sin every day. I do this every day. God, Phil, you just don't understand. I mean, I'm constantly sinning. And you know what God says? forgave him when Jesus died on the cross. Does that mean we can just sin? No. What I told you was God loves you. So what God knows is there's a time in the future when these sins are gone and he loves that person. Now I just made it sound like that was conditional, right? That he knows that your sins are going to be gone. But what if they don't? 
What if you got all this sin around you and all of a sudden you die? You never made it to this point where the sins are gone. Does that mean God didn't love you? That you never got to that point? No. 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 Unconditionally. God doesn't say, Phil, if you will do this for me, I will love you more. Phil, God does not say, Phil, if you will just step forward in faith, then I'm going to love you more than I did yesterday. But Phil, if you don't do what I told you to do, I'm not going to love you. No, he doesn't do that. Let's be glad he doesn't. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine what mess we'd be in? God looks beyond your sins. He sees the person that he has saved. No, he doesn't like the sin. No, he doesn't. But he sees beyond it. Let me tell you a story. I got a cat. My cat is a bully. I came into the marriage with Tanya with one cat. Tanya had two cats. My cat bullies her cats. My cat thinks that she's king of the mountain. And she fights the other two cats. She's a bully. And I hate that. But I love her. I wish I could break her. I mean, break her of the bullying, not break her. No animals were harmed during the filming of this production. I wish I could break her of the bullying. But I still love her. That's the way God loves us. He doesn't love what you do. He loves you. When we live loved, we can then move beyond our sins get past these strongholds, we can move into an arena where we know that we're loved, we know that God has forgiven us, and we can make a difference for other people. We can teach them that they are loved. But I'm not a teacher. Okay. We can provide service for them. We can open our home for them so that they can come in and talk when they're feeling down. We can have compassion on them and say, hey, I, I feel like you're having a bad day. Let, let me help you out. We can, we can give them things. We can do all kinds of things through God who gives us the gifts and gives us the ability and helps us to carry it out. And yeah, it becomes automatic when we know that we are loved. So we must live each day knowing that we are loved by God because it'll make a difference in our lives. And yeah, so there's still someone sitting there saying, I'm just not getting it. You don't understand. I got so many problems. Oh, do I ever understand? Problems can just wear you down, sit on your shoulders, and they can beat you down and just feel like you get to the point where I don't even want to move. I know that. I've been there. But then there was this moment when I realized just how loved I am. And nothing is going to separate me from that. Romans chapter 8 The last verse, I believe it's verse 39. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that we have in Christ Jesus. Nothing, 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 nothing. And for those of you who are struggling and and have all these burdens and you just want these things to go away, Romans 8, 18. For I believe that our present troubles cannot be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us and i'm not just talking about when we get to heaven no way man when you live loved you live differently your mind is different your life is different your actions are different everything about you becomes different everything and it's automatic and you didn't make it automatic It just automatically happened. God's love for you is automatic. 
and it tears down strongholds and it changes lives and it restores and it is possible for everyone every single person who's hearing my voice right now hearing my voice because i'm finally recording and i finally turned the microphone on I, honestly i've been sitting here over an hour trying to record this but here's the thing let's finish with this you are so incredibly loved by god that nothing's going to destroy that not your sins not your burdens not your concerns not anybody else in this world no one's going to take away that live it i want you to do me a favor i want you to wake up tomorrow morning and i want you to say I don't care if you get down on your knees. I don't care if you put your hands together. I don't care if you have your eyes open or closed. I don't care how you do it. If you're driving to work, just do this sometime tomorrow morning. I want you to say, thank you, God, for loving me. Okay? Then I want you to get up on Thursday or Friday and do it again. And then I want you to get up on Saturday. Again, say, God, thank you for loving me. And then when you go to church on Sunday, I want you to get up and say, God, thank you for loving me. Or if you don't go to church even, I don't care. Just, I want you to say, God, thank you for loving me. You're going to keep saying that. You're going to start believing it and you're going to see a difference in your life. It's going to be automatic. And not only that, it's going to help you pray. It's going to help you read the scripture. It's going to help you worship. It's going to help you get closer to God. Yes, I know. There are things keeping you from believing this right now. Yes, I know. There are things that are making you feel like you are not close to God. But if this is you, this is God. You're closer than you can ever be. You may feel like he's out here or even over there, but he's right there because you are loved. And when you start believing that and you start living that and you start understanding that, that God is right there. That's when you're going to feel closer to God. That's when you're going to feel like you're making a difference. That's when your life's going to change. It can happen. And I want to tell you right now that tonight I'm watching everybody who watches this live. Okay? And anybody who ever leaves a comment, either on Facebook or YouTube, I want you to know I'm praying for you that you understand what it means to be, to live loved. I don't care if somebody started watching it. Hey, Phil's live. Let's see what's going on. And said, oh, it's that crazy red tablecloth thing again. I'm praying for that person too. I'm keeping note of every single person who connected live or left a comment. And if you want me to pray for something specific, please mention it. Because I'm praying for you. Because I'm living loved. Because I know I am, and I want you to know you are too. And I'm going to pray that you know you're lived, you, that you can live loved. Because God loves you. Thank you all for co joining me tonight. Really enjoy doing this. Really enjoy having you all be here. Let's all live love together. And let's all make it automatic. Until next week, thanks for joining me at the table. Well, this is not good. I recorded 10 minutes with no sound. Recorded another half hour, probably one of the best shows I've ever done. And it wasn't recording at all. So, take three. <laughs>